Hey everybody, Mr. Let's Play It here. Today I'm going to make a new video for you guys about one of my collections, and this time it's not Pokemon games or Game Boy SPs. Uh, it actually has something to do with the shelf right here, which is a familiar sight in a lot of my videos. Uh, and there's a lot of things on it, but they're kind of small and hard to see. So far the only thing that people have consistently identified is uh, the GameCube controller boxes right here, and the bottle of vodka right there. But surprisingly, there's a lot of really cool stuff on that shelf, um, and mostly it has to do with my Pokemon figure collection that I've had going on since I was nine. When I was nine years old, there was this guy on YouTube who made a series that was basically like a TV show, except it was him using his own fingers to push his little Pokemon figures around, and he gave them names and voices, and he made a whole plot, and there were like 200 episodes to this story that this guy made with his Pokemon figures and his his two hands and a camcorder. Uh, and I watched the majority of that and it was actually so cool. Um, and so that's what started me into collecting. I started buying these figures off eBay when I was around nine and it turns out that's actually been a great investment because these figures have only gone up in value. My collection is now quite large and I'm only expanding it day by day. I originally collected Tomy brand figures um, up until recently. I now collect both Tomy and Bandai brand figures. Um, Tomy figures and Bandai figures are quite different. They're both made by Japanese toy companies, but um, Bandai figures are a little bit bigger and bulkier, whereas Tomy figures are a little bit harder, they're solid, uh, and they're a little bit better painted. So you just saw me pan over a crowd of Bandai figures followed by a crowd of Tomy figures, but I'll give you a little bit of a closer look about what the actual difference is. So this right here is an original Tomy Electabuzz. As you can see, the paint is kind of shiny, his limbs are all on their own, um, his tail is all out on its own, and he is completely solid. Now let's look at a Bandai Electabuzz. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit bulkier, the color is slightly different, um, the details are less pristine, although his arms are individual. But here's the biggest difference of Bandai figures, check this out. Completely hollow. Uh, a common name for these is finger puppets, because that's exactly what they're like, so I'll give you another comparison here. Uh, here is a Tomy Drudigan. You can always see on the back it says Tomy. Uh, I am filming with my front camera, so unfortunately that's going to be reversed for you guys, but um, that's a Tomy figure. They all have that engraving, and this is a pretty nice Tomy Drudigan. Now let's take a look at a Bandai Drudigan. It's just so different. He's, he's bulkier. Um, his painting isn't as pristine. He doesn't have individual limbs, really. He just has his wings. Uh, I believe Bandai is also printed right here. It's abbreviated to B. Ugh, it's not going to focus, but whatever. But as usual, there is still the big hole in there. Uh, it's not exactly suited to a finger, but it does kind of explain where the term finger puppet came from. Now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to show you my collection, and I'm going to split it. First, I'm going to show you the Tomy aspect of my collection, and next, I'm going to show you the Bandai aspect of my collection. Now, by numbers, I probably have 20 times more Tomy figures than I do Bandai figures. And you'll see why that is in a little bit. There's something special about a line of figures that Bandai released that Tomy really didn't do as much. So, without further ado, let me show you a little bit of a closer look at my Pokemon figure collection. So what I want to do first is show you my shelf, because only about 15% of my total collection is actually housed on the shelf. Uh, please bear in mind I am living in a small apartment, so excuse the ethernet cable and the toaster oven and the textbooks. Um, starting with this bottom shelf here, I've got a lot of older figures. It's a little bit dusty down there. Dust does gather quickly, and the only way to actually remove the dust is to take all the figures down and stand them all back up, which takes a while. So there's a bunch of Tomy figures down there, which makes sense because I am showing you the Tomy aspect of my collection. Up to the second shelf, we've got more figures. Surprise! These are all Tomy as well. 
Uh, I did need to make use of a plug there, so I just went ahead and hung Mew from it. This next shelf is a lot cooler. On the left side here, we've got a bunch of starters. Um, this Prinplup actually is not Tomy or Bandai. It's neither. I just got it at Toys R Us like 10 years ago, I think. Um, here's a bunch of Pikachus and a Pichu, which does not like to stand up. Surfing Pikachu. And then these are our original trainer figures. We got Gary, Officer Jenny, uh, Professor Oak, Brock, and Ash. I know there's more out there, but they're hard to find. Got legendary dogs back there. Bunch of legendaries around here, really. And now up to the top shelf, we see more Tomy figures. These ones are spread out a little more evenly because I put some of my favorite figures up here. Um, one door slam, though, does pretty easily knock a lot of these over. This Snivy doesn't like to stand. You'll notice there's another identical Snivy down here that also doesn't like to stand. I had to put a match under it just to get it to stand. A lot of cool stuff up here, though. I like this Noibat because the vast, vast majority of my collection is 3rd gen and before, and so getting a, the occasional 6th or 7th gen is fun. A lot of really nice Tomy figures up here. Love the uh, Sandy Ghast. This Absol doesn't like to stand either. It's lopsided, so I've got it standing on two coins. And then uh, we've got the GameCube controllers you've seen. This box is actually empty, and this one is brand new. It has a GameCube controller in it, and I just got a second one just in case I break the other GameCube controller, because Smash is pretty frustrating. Um, we've got more. We've got an Excel Excelgore and an Excavalier, and we've got some Meloetta forms up here. Those don't stand at all, but because they're, you know, dancing on one toe. So I just poked a little hole in the top of the empty box, and now they stand. Up here is a sealed Tomy Mimikyu. And then that's temporarily where I put my e-reader box, because I don't know what to do with it. Uh, up here we have some really nice e-reader cards. These don't look like much, but they're actually super rare. This card alone I value highly. Um, I'll make a video on these someday for sure, but these are all... But these are all Japanese e-reader cards. Then you'll see I've got, uh... Game boxes. I've got a ruby, Japanese sapphire, Japanese and English leaf green, and an emerald, and then some more battle e-cards. Those ones are sealed. Uh, there's nothing good in there, so I just like having the sealed box. Up here we got a Game Boy, and I have no idea why I have that candle. Someone gave it to me because they thought it was funny. And then, I've got some Gronk, of course. And those aren't Tomy either. Those are pop figures. The Squirtle comes out soon, and I will soon have the Squirtle, and then eventually I'll buy the Pikachu too, but just got those two for now. But yeah, so that's the shelf aspect of my Tomy collection. I'm now going to show you the rest of my Tomy collection. And there's also one thing I forgot to touch on up here, which is these little pendants that are hanging down. You'll recognize uh, the shinies on those. Um, I actually got these from a local artist who goes to conventions, um, and they have the regular sprite on the back. I just have all the shiny sprites facing forward. So these are really cute. I like having them hanging here. Uh, I actually originally bought six, but one of them was over here. This is my school backpack, and on here we've got a Tyranitar. This gets a lot of comments, but nobody actually knows that it's a shiny. They're just like, oh, cool, Tyranitar, you like Pokemon. And I'm always like, shinies? And they're like, what? No one gets me, man. And then the sixth one was actually an Absol, but uh, naturally I gifted that to my friend Absol Blogs Pokemon when I went to visit him. All right, now we're looking at my bed, which is going to make a good background for you to see the figures well. And we're going to take a look at where I store the rest of my Tomy figures. This is every figure that's not on the shelf. So to give you a little scale, I've got kind of big hands. That's what we're looking at. About like that. So I will dump these out for you guys for 
for uh, reference, this box weighs about eight pounds, I'd say. All right, that's all of them. Even a uh, piece of a bay leaf's neck escaped. Just gotta look at all of these. So yeah, that's a lot. Um, I really could keep spreading these out until they cover the entire frame of the camera. Um, there's just so many of these. And some of them are even really tiny because when I was little, I thought I was ordering Tomy figures, but I was just kind of dumb and I wasn't. And so then you end up getting figures that look like this, super tiny. Um, I'll see if I can make a comparison. All right, after a nice five minute game of I Spy, I found a comparison for you guys. So here is a Tomy Machop. And here is the Machop I got off eBay when I was little. It's a ripoff. <laughs> um, they're so cheap, badly painted, but some good comes out of it because here is a tiny ripoff gloom that appears to be shiny just because of how poorly painted it is. But yeah, these are the Tomy figures that I essentially don't have space for on my shelf. Um, it's really too bad, but I anticipate when I'm out of college and I move into my own house, I will display every last one of these on my shelf. So that's it for the Tomy figures. I now want to move on to the Bandai figures. Alright, now I don't have nearly as many Bandai figures, and you will see why in a second. I just have these three, the Salamence line, which I'm going to keep in the bag because I want to keep them separate. And then the about 40 that you see here. Um, I actually bought this lot of 40 because it came with one specific figure I wanted. And that figure is not here. Well, let me go ahead and show you. My first exhibit. Here's a Bulbasaur. And here's another Bulbasaur. Notice anything? That's right, guys. Bandai is an officially licensed company, and they make official shiny Pokemon figures. Now, this does not happen anymore. It's long discontinued. These are from 2004. But they release these in a lottery style for subscribers of certain magazines in Japan only, to my memory. And for the last more than a year, I've just been super devoted to collecting these specifically. Um, one thing I really like to do is to get a comparison for every single one. The shiny Bulbasaur is really what's worth it here, but I love to have a normal one to go with every figure. Unfortunately, I can't accomplish that for every Bandai shiny I have. Rather, I haven't accomplished that for every Bandai shiny that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the rest of these, and then I'll just show you my shelf. Alright, so you may or may not have noticed I skipped a shelf when I was showing you my Tomy figures. And that's because shelf number four is dedicated entirely to Bandai figures. There's the fifth, there's the first three. Now, let's take a look at this one. Starting here, we've got the complete Bulbasaur line. And I totally screwed up the nice pattern I had going when I took these off the shelf to show you. Let me fix that real quick. Back here we have the complete Squirtle line. Unfortunately, I have yet to uh, get comparisons for these, but that's just a matter of me going out and buying it. But that's the Squirtle line shiny. There's a shiny Butterfree right here. Remember that. And then here, it's a nice little shiny Chimeco. Some of my favorites here, the Charmander line, with a absolutely breathtaking shiny Charizard. Here is Kyogre. If we go up here, we'll see Salamence and Rayquaza. Kangaskhan, 
Scyther, Piplop, Chimchar, Turtwig. Oh, there we go. Swallow. I'm trying to stay zoomed in because I don't really want to spoil the rest of the shelf yet. One of my favorites right here, Flygon. Such a cool figure. Also another favorite, Snow Run. How cool is that? All right, coming back here, that is a Tomy Darkrai, and that is a, un, it's a different brand. Also, these three shiny legendary dog figures are neither Bandai nor Tomy either. Um, these are, this Houndor is just a mispaint, but it happens to look shiny, so I put it there. Uh, and then that is a Tomy Pashirisu next to a Bandai shiny Pashirisu. I need to get a Bandai normal Pashirisu soon. Um, and then this one is interesting. So, real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and show you the shiny Tomy figures I have. Shiny Tomy figures are very rare. There's hardly any of them. The first one, though, is fairly notorious. Shiny Gyarados. But what other shiny did Tomy decide to make? That's right. Garchomp. This is not a mispaint. This is an official shiny Garchomp figure. And you can tell the difference. The difference in these figures is more stark than the difference in the games. But yeah. So those are the only two Tomy shinies I have, aside from what I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and while I have these here, I'm going to show you the only shiny that I have in two brands. Here's our Bandai Gyarados. But I've also got a Bandai Shiny Gyarados. All right, and now if you look here, we've got a Mudkip and a Torchic, which I have yet to get comparisons for, a Krogunk, which I only have a Tomy comparison for, a Baneri, which I have no comparison for, and then something very unique. Two different styles, two different poses of Shiny Trico. This pose of Shiny Trico is a lot more common than this pose of Shiny Trico. There were two sets of shiny Hoenn starters released. The one I have is this Trico released with this Mudkip and this Torchic. Now there are two more. There's another Torchic that's in a different pose and a Mudkip that's in a different pose that correspond with this Trico in a different pose. And I have yet to find those. They're both very rare. You may have noticed I also have a Kyogre and a Rayquaza, but no Groudon. Groudon is another super rare one, and that's on my list too. And that leaves one figure left to show you, one you may have already noticed. The coup de grave of my entire collection, perched elegantly on an SP shell, inside a collector's baseball case, is the one and only Tomy Shiny Noctowl. Ladies and gentlemen, this figure alone has, a, has an approximate market value of $300. Is that not beautiful? Shiny Noctowl Tomy figure. I do plan to get a normal Noctowl figure, and even the normal Noctowl is worth like 30 to 40 bucks just because the shiny Noctowl exists. Now remember the shiny Butterfree I had? One of the coolest things I own is this. A sealed retail edition of that Butterfree that comes with a Bandai Ash a Bandai Togepi, I don't know why I say the brand before each one, a Mew, a Poliwhirl, and a Shiny Butterfree. How cool is that? Now, there is a little bit of a caveat, I would say, because on the back of this Butterfree somewhere, here you go, 1997. This Butterfree is actually not technically a Shiny. It is the predecessor to a Shiny. Shortly after... Nintendo put that shiny Butterfree, the pink Butterfree, into the show, they put shinies on the gold and silver version. So while that's not officially a shiny, it is the predecessor to all shinies. And there does exist a purple counterpart to it, which I need to get my hands on. So that's super cool. Also, the Kangaskhan and the Scythers, neither of those are real shinies, um, because they're both from 1996. They're not intended to be shinies, they're just two different colors, but I thought the Kangaskhan looked way too close. 
Uh, it's freaking green. That's a shiny Kangaskhan. And the Scyther, I just happened to stumble upon this differently colored one uh, out of nowhere. The differently colored one seems to be the rare one, because if we look over here somewhere, I do have another Scyther, and it matches the one on the left and not the one on the right. But yeah, that's not a real shiny Scyther, it's just a differently colored one from 1996. I'm not sure what its deal is. But all in all, I estimate the total value of this shelf, um, this shelf plus these six figures, I estimate the total value of this shelf plus those six figures to be about $1,500. Um, for example, I've seen this Charizard alone go for 130 in good condition. Um, I've seen these Rayquazas go for 85 Salamence is $50, um, and most of these average at least $20 each where I get them. The Flygon I've seen for 80 and essentially buying these things has become a hobby in itself because they can pop up on eBay while they are rare on eBay. I use a Japanese web proxy service that allows me to bid on auctions that don't ship to the US. The way it works is I bid on the auction and win the auction, they ship it to the proxy service in Japan who in turn ships it back to me. That's how I get most of these. It is a little bit expensive, but uh, these are valuable figures. It's an expensive hobby, and it's something I just have a ton of fun with. And now that I have revealed these figures to you and explained them to you, uh, I'm going to make unboxing videos in the future when I get shipments of new figures, so stay tuned for those. Here's one more thing I wanted to show you. The contents of these two bags. These are extras. A lot of time to get the best deals on these, you have to buy them in lots. And it's the nature of lots that there's going to be duplicates. So I've got a second shiny Charmander, a second shiny Charizard. Look, I'll show you. We've got two shiny Charizard, and we've got three shiny Salamence. So we've got uh, duplicates of shiny figures in abundance, and what I do is I just turn around and sell these, and I use the money from selling them to fund buying more figures. Uh, and I actually am bidding on an auction right now that happens to have a Charizard in it, not because I want another Charizard, but because I want the other figures in the lot, and I know I can just turn around and sell the Charizard for 100 bucks. So it's something that I really enjoy doing, uh, buying and selling these and just curating my collection is so much fun. I hope you liked the video.